My name is Jamie Cromwell, and you're watching Green Girls TV. TheGreenGirls.com Have you made any lifestyle changes to go green? Well, I made a lifestyle change in 1975 when I became a vegetarian, and in 94 when I became a vegan. If everybody would do that, we'd save a lot of water, a lot of land use, a lot of wasted energy in bringing protein to people through animals, and a lot of suffering, and a lot of greenhouse gases. If people would just one meal a week, and then one day a week, and then maybe one week a year, they could make an incredible difference. How did you feel about the transition? Do you remember, was it, did you have to quit cold turkey yourself, or? <laughs> cold turkey, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. No, I went the whole hog. Yeah, uh, no, I, when I, I came through the, uh, the feedlots in Texas for a day on my motorcycle, and it was so ghastly, animals to the right and left as far as you could see waiting to be slaughtered. And I just said, I can't do this anymore. And it was a process of educating myself because although you can, you have to make a choice, which is different than making a decision. When you make a decision, you often leave things out that are important. You have to balance your, get a protein source. You have to change the way you eat, the sugars you consume, the carbohydrates you consume. You, in other words, you become knowledge, knowledgeable and sophisticated about what your body needs, your particular body. Not because somebody says, oh yeah, do this diet or that diet, but because your body feels better. That is a process, a journey, that everybody really should go on because it's about self-knowledge. And if everybody would just begin that journey, with looking inside into themselves to what they need, we wouldn't be making the mistakes that we're making now of polluting this beautiful planet. Uh, for the, the idea to me that there's an area the size, I don't know what state it is, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, which is completely dead and has bottles floating around in it, plastic bottles, is atrocious. The idea that the ocean might die, that a whole species of fish is, are, is lost, um, that the Antarctic and the Arctic are melting. This is, uh, to leave, to think we are leaving this to our children is a crime. Uh, and those, and we are all responsible. There's no use pointing the finger at somebody else. It's up to us to educate ourselves and begin to make the choices. You know, don't drive your car one day a, a week. Get a bicycle. Use public transportation. Inform yourself and then demand that your leaders create the policies that make. Now besides going vegetarian, going vegan, what other tip do you think that you could give our audience that is the most effective in your opinion? The most effective, of course, is knowledge. You have to know whereof you speak. You have to, of course, be interested enough so you have to choose. So maybe the first thing is you have to choose. Are you going to choose life or are you going to choose catastrophe? Because we're on the brink of a catastrophe. And I think people understand that now. And if they think that their choice makes no difference, then they have given in to the hopelessness that I think has got us in this mess. If they choose because they know that their efforts can make a difference and that one voice and one action by one individual can be the tipping point that makes it possible for a change to occur, then they will are full of hope. What the projects are you currently working on right now? On a Holocaust survivor, I'm producing a documentary about uh, the mercury in California's water in the Sierra Nevadas. I'm writing a film script with my son. Um, you know, I'm a producer and a writer, and hopefully at some point soon an actor. Yay! Yay. TheGreenGirls.com